First off today, what is the magic of Fibonacci? Let's get moving into it. So first of all, Fibonacci is basically a simple maths equation. It's ultimately what we call the code of life itself. Basically, the Fibonacci spiral is just a number sequence pattern that we see a lot uh, in nature. And it's actually very appealing to the human eye as well. You know, it makes sense that we see, you know, these number patterns on pop up on our charts. The main thing you need to remember with Fibonacci is generally we're using it to either pick a target or we're looking to see how strong a move is or mapping a market cycle, right? So we're going to cover all those different ways that you can use it. But basically, you can see uh, how this works. And obviously, we start off at one, right? And so zero and one is one, right? And then we add one plus one. So in here, one plus one equals two, right? And then we have one plus two equals three. And so we're slowly unraveling the spiral and it's growing and growing and growing and moving out, right? But don't freak out. We're not about to show you fib spirals. We're going to be giving you a little bit more information on that. But basically, it's um, a number that just keeps expanding and keeps growing, right? A few places that we might see Fibonacci show up in reality in our life. Uh, and in nature, right? I really like the examples of the cactus and the way it grows out, um, the seashell and how it grows out and the fern are really good examples uh, that we see a lot. But ones that you might not know so much of is the double helix of our DNA, right? Uh, is in a Fibonacci spiral. Uh, a hurricane is actually in a Fib spiral, which I thought was pretty crazy. Uh, and then the galaxy one is one that blew me away completely. That actually, uh, galaxies, a lot of them spiral in, in the shape of the Fibonacci as well. But then probably the ultimate one, I think, has got to be Donald <laughs> Trump's hair is in the shape of a Fibonacci. <laughs> Right, and it would make sense, you know, that we see things like the Fibonacci pop up in our charts and, you know, for example, Donald Trump's haircut and there's probably a lot of different haircuts out there. They're in the shape of the Fibonacci spiral. People and mathematicians have used this for thousands and thousands of years and obviously we see it coming up in our charts, right? So the way we use it in our chart, basically we look for an area of the chart that we want to map and basically we click on the very bottom of the move. So what we're doing here is we want to map and see what's happening in this sequence of trading, right? And so down the bottom here, we click and we're going to drag that up to the top. So we're measuring this move from this point here all the way up to the top is what we're going to be measuring to see how far back the move actually retraces, right? And we can use this to measure like a bull flag for a measured move and pick up big targets and things like that. We can also use it to get an idea of how strong the market move is actually going in one direction, right? So we can use it to see if the market is quite bullish or if the market is more bearish, right? And so for example here, if we're getting a really strong push, but the market is holding above the 0 0.236 level, and then we break out to a new high, that's telling us that the market is very bullish, we're more likely to hit higher take profit targets. If we're going deeper into our Fibonacci retracement, that's telling us, you know, for example, if we're coming down to 0 0.618, that's telling us the market is a little bit less bullish. But if we're holding above the 618, generally that's telling us that we're going to get trend continuation. Generally, we don't want to see opening and closing below the 618. And this isn't really a great example of what I'm discussing right now because this is more of a, a full market cycle because this move happened over you know more than a year. We'll give more examples and more specific to that shortly and how to use it to um, play bull flags and bear flags and test the, the strength of the market. Generally, what we're looking at right here, though, is the strength of the market cycle, right? And this level here, the 0 0.786, is a level that does get tagged a lot by on a pullback of a market cycle, especially with altcoins. So if we have a really strong rally on altcoins, a lot of the times we will see a pullback the 0 0.786. And then also there's another number that I throw in as well, which is 0 0.883. We can also go in uh, the other direction as well, right? So this is the bullish move, obviously, and this is the bearish move, right? So we're using the Fibonacci tool because it's a retracement tool, right? So we're just flipping it on its head, right? And now we're measuring from the top down to the bottom. And with Fibonacci measurements, you always want to go from wick to wick, right? So we go click up the top of this week and then we drag it and click down here and then we drag across so we can map the rest of the market, right? And you can see how it, it's, it's quite funny, even though these points got put in before we put this one in, 
they're still actually tagging perfectly at 0 0.618, right? And you can see when we come up and we actually get a perfect tag a couple of times through here at the 618. And then we finally break through it and then we flip it into support and then rally from there. And something that's actually quite funny that you'll find when you start using Fibonacci more often that all the time when you use the Fib tool, the key levels, so the 382 and the 618, which is the key levels in the Fibonacci tool that we look for the most, uh, they usually line up a lot with key horizontal levels in, in the chart, right? So for example, like, you know, if we're looking for like the 382 or if we're looking for a 618 pullback, and that also lines up with a really key level in the chart. So this is a really good example of that, right? So we've got a 618 is the key level through here and we come back and we bounce off that quite nicely, right? This is basically, you know, a really easy uh, setup to have the fibs, but I'm going to show you the way that I run my fibs. When I'm running the way that I use my Fibonacci tool, right? So if I'm going down, right? I'm just, so I'm tracking a bearish movement, something like this, right? And it breaks out the top. Uh, and then we'd be looking for target one is here and then target two is here, right? So uh, same goes when we're going in the other, other direction, right? So let's just say we've got a bull flag, right? Drag this guy up a bit. Right, so we've got a bull flag. Let's just say the price action is looking like this, right? Really nice falling wedge, something we'd see pretty common in uh, air bull run. Right, so I'm going to drag it up from the bottom of the wick to the top wick. So we're mapping this impulsive move, right? And uh, now we're looking to see what price is going to do. So it looks like it's coming back right now to the 0 0.382, which is one of the key levels, right? And so if it's holding above the 382, I'm going to be expecting that it's going to run and push to the second target, right? Which is the negative uh, 618, right? And the first target is the zero negative 0 0.272, right? So I would expect it to push the target two. If we go deeper, right? And let's say we work down the bottom here, we bounce off the 618 and then reclaim this level. I'm going to be looking more to take profit at the 0 0.272, which makes sense, right? The deeper that you go in the pullback, the lower your target's going to be. It's not really super complicated, right? But this is just a really easy um, FX strategy. And you will see, especially when the market is flagging like this and pushing and flagging and pushing, uh, you will see these uh, take profits uh, get hit. People will, like, as soon as we hit these levels, you'll see people will start to sell and there'll be a bit of um, profit taking. And sometimes you get a, a bull flag, like on the lower time frames, like on the five minute chart or something like that. And then it will push again and then it hits the next one. Sometimes it goes a little bit higher and overshoots, but generally you will see some sort of profit taking at these levels, which also means that price can reverse at these levels sometimes. So you might get up here and then it might just nuke all the way back down and then push again. But yeah, generally that's like what we see a lot of the way that the market moves, especially when it's bullish. When it's bearish, it doesn't move as cleanly like this. Uh, it chops around a lot more. It's a little bit more difficult to trade. Uh, it doesn't hit the key levels as smoothly. But what I just mapped out for you is a very typical play of Bitcoin. So yeah, it's very simple, this strategy. Uh, if you get a nice entry candle off the 618, we're going to be looking for target one, right? If we get a nice entry candle off the 382, we're going to be looking for target two. So yeah, to get this up, just draw your Fibonacci, which is... So it's going to be underneath the pitchfork, right? And you just right click and it's all the way down here. And it's a fib retracement, right? You just click anywhere on the screen, right? And remember, we always go from wick to wick on this, right? And just right click, go to settings, right? And the, this is the setup that I use, right? So you can just go and delete whichever one's uh, less important. Uh, so here, you can just completely copy the ones that I've overridden. But the key is that you want to put in a negative 0 0.272 and a negative 0 0.618 and that will draw in uh, these targets for you. So all you have to do is just easily map like the bull market rally. So like for this example, you could do, um, so all I'm doing is going from this point here, right? From here up to here, because that's the impulsive move, right? And then you can see we held very strongly above the 0 0.236, right? Which is what I was just talking about before. And then you can see we come up and we tag the 272. And as soon as we get to the first 272 target, right, uh, people start taking profit at that point there. So, yeah.
And then obviously, you know, we're putting that hinge shoulders, pulled back, you know, this is sort of the throwback and then pushed on. So this is obviously looking at the daily time frame, but, um, you know, looking at the lower time frames, uh, you know, this plays out more and more and more, which is generally what we end up trading. We end up trading a lot more on the lower time frames because those setups are there more often. So I'll give you a really good example here, which is, you know, you're the perfect sort of bull flag uh, setup, right? So this is our nice little bull flag. So we're just going to ch um, chuck this Fibonacci on, right? And all I'm doing, I'm just drawing it from this point here, right? Up to this point here, right? And so then we're just looking to see where uh, the take profit target. So take profit target one, take profit target two, right? We're just going to use our replay tool. We're going into the one hour. Right, so on this bull flag, we've got a really nice um, multi-touch of the triangle. So one, two, three, four, five, right? And then we break out and push from there, which is typically how uh, these bull flag type setups work, right? So this ends up turning into an ascending, I'm pretty sure. All right. We can see how it comes back and retests this level here. And then we get the rally from there. And we start to push up to the 272, right? As we get close to 272, you can see uh, people starting to take profit at that level and then just launches straight through. And then you, as soon as we get above the second target, uh, people start taking profit there as well, right? I think probably the biggest issue that people have with drawing their Fibonacci's is uh, they struggle uh, to know where to start, right? So I'm just going to give that a bit of attention now. Uh, what we want to look for is when the market starts to swing back down, right? So the last swing low, right? So we're going sideways here, right? The last swing low before we start to move into our impulsive move, right? So what we're trying to identify is an impulsive move, right? So we're looking for the move from this range here to the top here, right? So that was the impulsive move that we want to track, right? And so when we're tracking that move, the Fibonacci tool is going to tell us how strong it is by telling us how far the retrace is. That's why this tool is called a Fib retracement, right? So we're going to start at the last swing low before our impulsive move started. And we're going to start at the wicks, right? So there's the cluster of little wicks here. We're going to take it from that point there. All right. And then we just go to the end of the impulsive move, which is where we topped out, which is this point here. Some people like to drag it across, you know, the highest wick in, in the pattern, but generally I'll, I'll most of the time, unless there's for some various reason, right? I'm going to go to this, the top of where the flagpole would be and then just drag it across, right? So this point down here, right? To this point down here, pretty straightforward. Now I'm going to show you guys one more thing. So Bitcoin, when it's in a bull run, loves uh, the 618 pullbacks, right? So we can start off by tracking our bull run from the bottom wick here to the top wick here. And then we're just dragging across, right? And we can see, right, that we have this big push. So we've just tracked from this wick here and we're drawing it all the way to the top of this wick here, right? Oops. Right, and then we have the pullback, tags 0 0.618 and then pushes on from there. Right, and then we're gonna do the same thing again here. We're just gonna use these wicks, right? We come back, we wick below, right? So we're just doing from this point here, right? To this point here. You can see here that we actually wick below the 618, but we don't close below it, right? So when we're in a bull run uh, and Bitcoin's looking quite strong and moving up like it is currently, right? We wanna be tracking the impulsive moves and seeing how deep the retracement's gonna go, right? And what we don't wanna see is opening and closing below the 618, right? You can see here that it was running really nicely on cubes as well because we sort of just go sideways, respecting and closing above uh, the 0 0.5 level, right? And then pushes from then. Right, so then we're gonna do this again. Right, we can come back, almost hit the 618. Uh, doesn't quite get there. Respects the 0 0.5 level quite strongly and takes moving forward. Right, comes back, spends just a tiny little bit of time below the 618, right? And then we rally from there, right? And then the market starts to get quite bullish from here, right? This one doesn't come back as deep, right? We bounce off the 0 0.5, wick into the gap a little bit, 
right? But obviously holds 0 0.5 very nicely. I think this one actually gave a really nice entry. So yeah, perfect entry off the 618 again, right? And come down, tag that retracement level and then rally quite strongly from there. Then the last one, I think this is a 382 from memory. Yeah, it comes down, comes close to the five, 382 and then rallies from there, right? So basically, you know, with markets and you can see this just by looking at it, you push and then you pull back, you push and then you pull back. So this is the theory of why hodling works so well, right? Uh, you know, in bull markets, especially when we had a three-year bull market, everyone's just like, hodl, 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 because it always, you know, rally from there. Okay, so then uh, we put in the top, right? We put in our, we put in our market top here. Uh, and then we're gonna, now we're going to start to trace uh, going the other way, right? So all I'm doing now is I'm starting at the top, right? And I'm going to the bottom week. Right, really simple. So I'm just doing the opposite way. All right, so we're starting up here and we're going to the bottom, right? And now we're seeing how far up we're going to go, right? When we're retracing in the other direction, right? We can see we come tag three eight twos. Then we roll over from there. Right, so now we're going to go from this week here to this point here. We're going to drag across, right? And we get a perfect tag of the 618. Right, and then we roll over from there. Right, same again from the top to the bottom. Right, we come up, perfect tag of the 618. Right, and then we're going to go again, right, from the top here to the bottom. We come up, perfect tag of the 618. So, literally, for the entire year and a bit that we we're in this bear market, all you had to do was draw Fibonacci and then short from the 618, right? It really can be uh, that simple. And that's, that's pretty much it for the more basic levels of it.